All right, thanks so much, everybody, for coming out. Uh, so most of you saw uh, the keynote this morning, I hope. And I'm just going to quickly touch on, basically, um, the work we've been doing in Open Lab as it relates to Kubernetes and OpenStack. And this was originally going to be um, about 40 minutes or so of a demonstration of like digging into it. But because it's a lightning talk, of course, we won't be able to get too much into stuff. So Open Lab was seeded um, back in Sydney by these five companies. And once we got everybody together in terms of the companies who were willing to participate, then we went out and we got uh, folks from, these, from Kubernetes and uh, OpenStack and a few other communities um, and a few other projects to start figuring out how could we ensure that you know, the inevitable was coming, which was cloud providers code being pulled out of Kubernetes uh, core uh, and having to kind of live on their own and be uh, maintained by SIG leads or cloud vendors. Um, so what we essentially got to was not only doing that, but also um, adding an additional architecture, uh, which is ARM. So we build the cloud provider on not just x86, but we also build it on the ARM architecture. And then we not just test it on x86 or test it on ARM and, uh, in silo, but we test them across each other, as you saw uh, this morning. And what's exciting about this is this is actually ready to use right now. Most importantly, it's fully conformant, passes all Kubernetes conformance tests. You can see the results here are old <laughs> right now, but if you go to the website, those uh, last updates and last runs are actually still green, thankfully. Um, and if you look at the top there, you see that right now only GCE, which is expected, and OpenStack are passing all conformance. So for us who are here who are using OpenStack under the hood, you know that you can go and use the cloud provider right now, and you're, you, you can guarantee that your cloud, your, your cloud if you're using it, um, is conformant. Right? And then as you move to version 1.11 of Kubernetes and above, which the providers are going to be extracted out at that time, then you know that this stuff is already ready to go. So if you started plugging it in today, you wouldn't have to change anything as you move forward. So a lot of the work, um, in addition to the five logos, again, who essentially seeded, the, seeded Open Lab and this work with the other community people, um, ARM, Lenaro, and Cavium were very important in terms of us getting ARM uh, hardware and also testing out building um, the cloud provider on ARM. And again, as we said this morning, there's the link to the, the provider. Um, of course, it's in the Kubernetes repo can go and download and start using it today. Then the stuff that we demoed this morning, you can get that as well. And the OpenStack Passport program offers uh, public clouds who are participating who give you like a code that you can go and sign up and get some resources for free to try stuff out. And if you are uh, one of the public clouds who are participating in the OpenStack Passport program, um, reach out to us at Open Lab. We work very heavily with Vexhost, who's a public cloud. We can work with you guys as well to ensure that everything is working successfully in your public cloud. And then the last thing in terms of slides, of course, if you would visit openlabtesting.org, uh, you can start testing out your tools and applications, essentially your integrations, as I showed before, uh, services that you might want to build on top of Kubernetes. And you don't want to have to worry about all the validations in between, right? You just want to be able to say, I want to use Kubernetes because I got an idea for a service. And the test that we have, the results we have here, you you know vanilla OpenStack code all the way up through to Kubernetes. If you need load balancers, like Oct from Octavia, you need sender volumes being attached to those containers. You know that that stuff works very well. So you don't have to go through the pain of, OK, if I deploy it and something breaks, is it my service or is it the projects that I'm trying to use? So our hope is that it's your service and not the projects. But we want to ensure that you know that before you start trying to use, use the stuff. So I'll break out from the slides here. And for those who did not get a chance to see uh, the demo, um, I'm just going to let it play. It's not that long. And I'll just kind of talk through it. So essentially what you're seeing here is in Vexhost that there is a uh, 
right now there's a ARM as well as an x86 uh, worker node, and then there's also a master node that's x86 as well. And as we just let it run, uh, what we want to point out is that if you go to the volumes, you'll see three initially, which are the volumes that are being used by these, uh, by these nodes, right? And then as you go to, uh, as we go to the network section, what you'll see also is that there's, there's the load balancer section, which is backed by Octavia, and um, there's no load balancers right now. So what's important to understand about this is that in the Queen's release of OpenStack and going forward, Neutron LBAS v2 is deprecated. Everything is supposedly moving to Octavia. So again, as you start to move down the path of getting Octavia running, you can know that already the Kubernetes stuff is, is already baked in. All right, so what we're doing here is we're basically creating our containers. All right, we're creating our persistent volumes. Um, we're walking through here essentially the, uh, the YAML file that's used for these. So we got a 20 gig storage uh, persistent volume claim. We have, as you can see, uh, no selectors for x86, which is our DB. And then we also have a node selector for, um, or using a node selector for the ARM64 um, web front end. And then we also have the service, which is the load balancer. All right, so as the demo rolls here, what's going to happen is we're going back to the dashboard. We want to ensure that the volume has been, you know, created as expected without us having to do anything manually except launch that, uh, that YAML file using kubectl. As you can see, it's there. We then want to go and check to make sure that the load balancer is there. And what we'll be able to see here is that the provider is Octavia and the floating IP address has already been assigned. We can verify that using kubectl. And then we're going to open this up in our browser. And you can see that it's working right now. All right? So if you have any questions, again, or if you have some integrations you're thinking about you want to use or have some services that you want to try to test out um, on top of these projects, you're welcome to go to openlabtesting.org. You can reach out to me personally or go there uh, and click on the support open lab if you want to support these efforts or click on get started. And basically what we do is we're very hands-on. We reach out to you. We discuss um, what do you want to set up. We have a number of different configurations, FPGA, GPUs, uh, programmable network devices, bare metal <laughs> driven by OpenStack Ironic, bare metal dedicated service if you want to deploy on your own, Juno all the way up to master. So we have a lot of different variations in terms of um, how we can discuss what you're trying to integrate and ensuring that it works very well and is consistently tested uh, with the least amount of manual uh, touching, All right? So thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it.